Hey, Nathan speaking. This is the first video on the channel by Resvan. It is an intermediate level tutorial about signals and using an event bus system, a pattern to decouple code. If you are a beginner with signals, you'll want to check our beginner friendly tutorial, link in the description below. But without further ado, I'll leave you in Resvan's hands. Enjoy. The Observer pattern is such a central workflow tool for developing games in Godot that everyone should have a basic understanding of it. We'll start by looking at managing signals through code because it makes understanding the user interface method much easier. Let me introduce you to the demo I prepared. There's only one action that the player can take and that is to attack the dummy on the right hand side. The player is triggered via keyboard or mouse input and it includes a call to a function that emits the attacked signal. The event is captured by the dummy node which reacts with its own animation that triggers the damaged signal. The signal is in turn connected to the player user interface system which reacts by increasing the experience level. We can see all of this happening in the bottom panel graphically. Every type of node comes with predefined signals which can be viewed in the node panel near the inspector in the default view under the signals tab. The node panel also lists uh, custom signals which have to be defined in script. So let's open the player script and take a look at the anatomy of a signal, which is very simple. The declaration starts with a signal keyword followed by the name of the signal followed by an optional list of comma separated values or parameters that are to be sent to the function that connects to the signal. The, and this looks very much like a function call. The only difference is that when we don't have anything to send to the functions, we can omit the parentheses in the signal decla declaration altogether. And the node panel updates according to the changes we made in the script uh, here. Um, we're going back. As a side node, at GDQuest we have coding guidelines and in accordance to those, I named the signals uh, using uh, verb at past tense because we're talking about uh, an action that we react to. In the player example, we see that the signal is emitted in the attack function, which is called via the animation player, but this is a topic for a different tutorial. What we see here is that the emit signal function takes the signal name as a string followed by the optional variables defined when declaring the signal. So in this case, the damage that the player sends on attack. The dummy node defines the onPlayer attack method that receives the damage when the player attacks. It also defines the damage signal, which sends an experience value. And this signal is emitted during the uh, reaction animation of the dummy, just as in the case of the player attack animation, it's emitted in the damaged function. And this uh, signal is then caught in the player user interface in the on dummy damaged method, which increases the experience level of the player. These connections between different parts of the scene tree are orchestrated by the root node, in our case, the signals script in the ready function. The connect function that connects the signal to a method in a particular object can be more complicated than this. Here we see that we call it on the object that defines the signal. It takes the signal as the first parameter, then the target node that defines the function to be called when the signal gets triggered, then the name of that function. But since this can be more complicated, let's take a look at the documentation. And the first thing to note is that the connect method is an object method rather than a node method. This means that in code we can connect signals to other objects as well, not just nodes. So it's more flexible in this regard uh, than the editor user interface way of connecting signals because via user interface we can only connect to other nodes. At connection time we, also, we can also define extra parameters to be sent to the method to which the signal is connecting. These parameters are given as an array, the binds parameter, and this can be viewed as constants to be passed in the method each time the signal is emitted, no matter if the signal sends in variable data or not at the time of emission. The flex parameter is explained through the connect constants, so let's quickly go through them. Defer means that Godot stores the signal emission in a queue which is resolved on idle time and this becomes important in advanced setups that take advantage of multi-threading and so on. Persist means that if we want to save the object to disk, we can recover the object on load with connections intact. One shot is very well summarized here. It forces the signal to disconnect after the first emission. While the last option isn't documented, reference counted, 
But my understanding is that it lets us connect the same signal to the same function multiple times without getting an error, which happens by default in Godot. One thing you'll notice is that because we have to manually register signals to call functions through the connect method, this creates dependencies, so we need to be careful how to do it. For example, if we switch to the player script, we could have connected the attacked signal to the dummy on player attacked method inside of the player uh, script itself. But this creates a tight coupling between the dummy and the player nodes, and we want to avoid that. So I'm going to remove this. And instead, we're going to delegate this functionality to the signal's uh, parent node, in this case. It's worthwhile noting that delegating connection definitions to the parent nodes does fragment the code a bit. And in very complex games, it can be difficult to track all of these connections, because we use the connect function in other nodes rather than the ones that need them uh, in other scripts. So in this case, the parent nodes but they can be multiple levels above as well, so in complex games. So it's rather difficult to keep in code track of all of these connections. So as an alternative, I've prepared this other example, a singleton's driven example, where if we go to the project settings under the autoload tab, we can see that there's this events singleton defined over here, and you can disregard the utilities singleton that's not relevant for this example. So let's open up the event singleton to see what it's all about. It's only, it only defines the signals that we need in our game, and that's pretty much it. So how do we use this? If we open the dummy as an example, because this also connects to a signal and this also emits a signal, we can see that in this example, we use the player attacked signal and connect it to on player attack function, which is defined in this very uh, script as well, through the event singleton. And we also use the event singleton, obviously, to emit the necessary signals. So this basically enables us to localize the connections and the emissions as necessary in the scripts that need it, instead of delegating this task to the parent nodes. So as you can see in the scene tree panel, the signals doesn't have a script attached to it any longer because it's not necessary. That was there only to do the gluing between different parts of our game in the previous example. And we can see that the demo functions exactly as before. Uh, there's nothing changed in the actual gameplay. It's only that the implement implementation differs. So there's one downside though of this approach and that is that we don't have the visual feedback in the nodes panel any longer because we don't define the signals so for example if we open up the player script we don't have the signals defined any longer they're defined in the events singleton and that's it but the event singleton isn't a node in the scene tree panel which we can explore in godot uh, in the user interface so there's pros and cons of these approaches and it's up to you based on your style and needs to use them. Yet another way of managing signals in Godot is using the editor user interface directly, so uh, visually. And a clear advantage of this is that we have visual feedback in the Sintry panel and we have detailed information in the note panel about the connections that uh, we have defined. And to explore this further, I'm going to open the attacked, I'm going to double click the, the attacked signal defined in the player script to be presented with this model dialog, where in the left hand side, we have this clone of the scene tree panel view. And the node that defines the signal is highlighted in red, while the node to connect to is highlighted with this band um, and we can see in the bottom part that selecting the nodes over here in the Sintry clone uh, updates the path to the target node which defines the function to connect to. On the right hand side we have these extra arguments which are the binds array that we previously looked at 
uh, exploring the documentation of the connections uh, of the connect function. And lastly, in the bottom right hand side, we have this toggle buttons make function, which I hope is self explanatory. It creates a skeleton function for us within the dummy script so that we don't have to type it in ourselves. And um, one thing to note over here using this method is that you have to have a script attached to the node prior to using this uh, model dialog, otherwise it won't work. And the last two options in the bottom right hand side are deferred and one shot and this correspond to the constants uh, that we looked at while exploring the documentation. Now one clear disadvantage is uh, using this visual method of connecting signals is that we can't connect nodes to objects or objects to objects because they're not available in this view in the sentry panel clone in the left hand side and these are only the only options that we have in order to connect signals using this method and another pretty big disadvantage in my opinion is that i'm gonna open up the player scene to illustrate this if i want to connect the attacked signal player signal to something outside of this scene i can't do that because i don't have the option of exploring other scenes in the left hand side over here. So it's up to you to decide which of these approaches is best for your needs and your game. And I hope you like this tutorial and I'll see you next time.